Time is the unconquerable adversary to us all. Everything you know will be lost to time and everything you love will slowly fade into a pile of dust on the floor like a candle flickering its final ember. Everything will go dark and go out and... The point is, many clubs have once played football and now they don't. We're going to Scotland this time because the list I did a few weeks ago about clubs in England that no longer exist taught me anything. It's that people rarely seem to like Scotland and all the tenants and fighting that it brings with it. Welcome to Good Sport Reviews. My name is Lewis and this is 10 Scottish clubs that no longer exist. And if you want the channel to continue to exist, then make sure to click subscribe, click like, it takes two seconds and it helps get the video noticed. Thank you very much. Number 10, Erdrionians FC. We're starting off our adventure in the DeLorean back in 1878 with the formation of Excelsior Football Club, Stan Lee would be proud, who were known as Erdrionians FC from 1881. The club joined the Scottish Football League in 1894 and actually enjoyed some early years in the division, challenging Rangers on multiple occasions and actually winning the Scottish Cup in 1924 after beating Hibernian 2 0. They boasted incredible players like Huey Gallagher and Bog McPhail and looked set to become a mainstay in the top flight. And while they went through a yo yo spell between 1950 and 1992, they did become a major force in the First Division and Cup competitions, winning the Scottish Challenge Cup three times and finishing runners up in the Scottish League Cup three times also. Unfortunately, the one and only winners of the Spring Cup would soon face major problems as following the sale of Broomfield. Field, they were made to ground share for four years with Clyde at Broadwood Stadium and the move stretched the club's financial capacity to breaking point. A dwindling attendance figure due to the poor performances on the pitch meant that in 2000 liquidation was touted around and despite following this with an impressive 2001-2002 season which saw them chasing promotion, the club went out of business in 2002. Number nine, Lindertis. Eight years is not a long time for a football club, but it just depends what you do with it. And unfortunately, this side didn't do a great deal, but sides get Thumped. Founded back in 1883, Lindertis FC recorded their first win in December of that year, beating a team of local shoemakers 5-0, the Champions League quality match right there. And they looked to try and make a name for themselves in the Scottish Cup, which didn't happen as the side only won one match in the competition, but it was in grand fashion. After losing to Dundee Hart 4-3 the previous season in a match which saw Lindertis 3-0 down only for them to make it 3-all before conceding a late goal, the club faced them again in the following campaign with Harp actually winning 2-1 but being disqualified from the contest as they fielded unregistered players and this allowed Lindertis a buy into the next round which resulted in the club's one and only victory in a 3-2 victory over East End in a match which saw a protest post-match and the referee turned out to be a drunk Lindertis fan who took off his hat and celebrated when the side scored the little rascal that's how you take advantage of a situation turns out it wasn't true but the club were fined 10 shillings for not having corner flags in place. The rest is history as the side lost a large number of its best players to another local team in their village and they went defunct in 1891 with the club unable to pay off debts and agreements that were in place. Number eight, Gretna FC. Not to be confused with Gretna Green, a club from the 19th century. Gretna FC were formed in 1946 by local workers and servicemen who returned from the Second World War. And the club actually played in the Carlisle and District League, despite being a Scottish club. This was because they were so close to the Anglo-Scottish border and the club soon moved to the newly formed second division of the Northern League, from which the club were promoted immediately and won back-to-back -back league titles. Following this, they applied for the Scottish League twice in 1993 and 1993. 1999, in a bid to help their application, they played a Rangers 11 in a match to raise money for victims of the Lockerbie bombing, a match which they would go on to win 2-1. They were eventually accepted in 2002 and won three back-to-back -back division titles, winning divisions 3-2-1 between 2005 and 2007, scoring a remarkable 297 goals, 130 of which came in the 04-05 season alone. They also reached the 2006 Scottish Cup final and became the first club from the Scottish third tier to qualify for the UEFA Cup. Sadly, their home ground of Raydale Park did not meet SPL standards and their league form struggled massively, which affected the club's financial situation with staff and players not receiving wages and manager Davey Irons leaving the club. The club went into administration on the 12th of March 2008, suffered a 10-point deduction and lost a large portion of its fan base with only 431 people turning up for a match against Inverness and the club was soon liquidated with debts of around £4 million. 
Number seven, Scone FC. If I said to you, name the least intimidating club name imaginable, I feel like Scone FC would take the gold medal. It's up there with Unicorn AFC, Glitterball United, and Tottenham. Scone, or Scone, however you want to pronounce it, were founded in 1896 and started life like a lot of clubs did back then, playing friendlies before entering competitive football. This happened for Scone when they entered the Perthshire Cup, winning their first match against Blackwatch, and then losing their next one 9 0 against Fair City Athletic. Despite this, they did win the Perthshire league winning all 10 of their matches and won it two more times before reaching the final of the Perthshire Cup in 1922-1923. The original match date was postponed and following the rescheduling the club suffered many issues the day of which two players were injured a third fell ill and a fourth suffered family bereavement therefore they didn't have enough players and without reserves the match was awarded to St Johnston instead. After being primarily in the Perthshire Consolation Cup the side found themselves struggling for funds in 1922 with the ground also needing rebuilding and despite this being done the side were expelled in the Scottish FA in March of that year. Number six, Carf and Shamrock FC. The amount of controversy surrounding this club is astounding. Only existing for 10 years between 1885 and 1895, the side only really played in cup competitions as a lot of teams did in the 19th century due to the lack of leagues that were developed at this point. In the 1890-91 season, the side lost the rights to play Bayek's Nose Park and this caused a split in the side with Carf and Hibernians being formed who played in the same kit and both arguing who should play under the club's original name. The original club, nicknamed The Boys, enjoyed moments like holding cup holders Celtic to a 2 all draw in the 1890-91 Scottish Cup and had some terrific matches in the competitions. But now, on to the controversy. <sighs> the club's first Lancashire Cup tie ended with a 9-1 win against Royal Albert FC, which the club protested, claiming that Carfin had borrowed three players from Motherwell who were cup tied. Fast forward to their first Scottish Cup run, and the club gained notoriety for violence, introducing the so-called game of fisticuffs to the competition after their left halfback had been taken off with a broken leg and the match being abandoned due to fans on the pitch. They then lost 11-0 in the next round and protested that the Green Ox side, which beat them, played rough, which was basically laughed at as they'd lost their protest deposit in the process and in 1892 cup match fans protested because the markings on the floor were drawn on incorrectly i mean good lord they dissolved in 1896 after failing to pay their sfa subscription fee and that was the end of the club Number five, Musselburg FC. I imagine it's hard owning a football club. I possess about as much business sense as a bottle of Fanta, so I struggle to put myself into the scenario. But I do know one thing. If you're the club's secretary, don't get caught for embezzlement. Musselburg FC were founded in 1912, joining the Scottish Football Association soon after and entering the newly revived Eastern League in a season where they also reached the semi-finals of the East of Scotland Qualifying Cup, catchy name lads. However, despite having an impressive first campaign with the siding intention for the championship title after registering 20 points from 16 matches the league never finished due to two sides being unable to play more than half their scheduled games and no side playing as many games as Musselburg and this was just the beginning of the club's woes in February 1913 club secretary James Minty resigned after being found guilty of fraud with an arrest warrant being issued soon after turns out he'd taken £210 from the club to pay back money lenders with the intention of paying this back from his wages which he wasn't allowed to do. Because of this setback, the club did not renew its membership to the league and resigned from the Scottish FA in August of 1913. Number four, Jeddart FC. Another for the strange name game selection, Jeddart FC existed from 1930 until 1937 after being formed as a side from the Rayon Factory. The side joined the East of Scotland League in 1930 and took part in the Border Cup and Kings Cup that same season. The first of those contests they would go on to win during the 1936-37 season. In the same campaign, they won the league, losing only one match in the process. A big reason for their success in this short time was because the club focused on importing players from around the region of Scotland rather than relying on purely homegrown talent to progress their side. With this success, the club applied for the Scottish Football Association but were rejected as the club's back end facilities didn't meet the required standard and this devastated the club with the expense required to get to this point, taking more money from the club than they were making and without a consistent income from the league, they couldn't meet their financial requirements and the side shut down just before Christmas of 1930. 
Number two, Paisley Celtic FC. Founded a decade after the collapse of Paisley Hibernian, the club founded as Cartvale began life in the Scottish Junior Cup in the 1892-93 season, a competition they were soon disqualified for for fielding a professional player. Well done, lads. Rather than seeking legal action for this, the side decided to join the Scottish Football Association instead of entering the Scottish Cup and Runeshire Cup for the first time. The club endured mixed times. They beat Dyke Bar in the first round, but lost the second round to Cambus Lang for free, during which Francis Donnelly, an uncle of one of the players, fell down the stairs of the house that he was staying in and died tragically. In county performances, they beat Paisley Academicals 5-1 to beat Patrick Drain, breaking his collarbone during the match, and they also made it to the semi-finals of the Paisley Charity Cup. The side were becoming a force in the Scottish system that was until 1895-96, when the side lost all their Scottish qualifying cup games and then just vanished. No, seriously, like DB Cooper, they just opened the plane door and jumped out. It's hard to find any trace of why the club disbanded. Some theorise it was due to the lack of income, which couldn't compete with the other sides in the division, and others have said they simply didn't get enough positive results to stay afloat. But either way, it's another side lost to Scottish history. Number two, Jamestown FC. This list is long and bloody mental. Genuinely, everything either seems to involve death, corruption, or both. And this one is another in that lineage of Scottish sides, making everything a UFC event. Jamestown FC were formed in 1877, competing initially in the Scottish Cup, the first of which they went out to after losing 15-0 Ouch. Another cup adventure was in the 1879-80 competition when they went out in the first round after a player from another club was made referee for this match and there were considered questionable decisions made. The match was protested but eventually dismissed. The side would bounce around cup competitions for the next few years, not being able to compete in a competitive league at the time and suffered many cup controversies, the saddest of which as one of the club's players, Harry McCulloch, drowned in the Leven in 1887 and several cup matches were abandoned due to the club fielding ineligible players but the biggest moment came in 1889 so Jamestown was set to play the Vale of Leven Hibernians in the 1889 Scottish Cup one year after a cup match which was protested because Hibernian felt their players were being treated like beasts more than men. After the fixture ended 3-1 to Jamestown, the umpire for the club, Daniel Turner, escorted the referee to Alexandria Station where he was attacked by two Hibernian players who brutally kicked him and seriously injured his head. The two men were put on trial and found guilty for drunken assault, but they were acquitted eventually. And number one, Bliveswood FC. The first Scottish Cup was played in 1873-1874 and Bliveswood FC were one of the first clubs involved in the competition with the side reaching the semi-finals despite, surprise, surprise, controversy after the club appointing one of its members as their umpire who proceeded to give tactical advice during the match. The club went out in the semis after the match was called off in the 80th minute due to poor light and the side being 4-0 down and I think this was just the umpire showing them mercy. There would be around until 1882 following further cup attempts but they couldn't manage any real success with many of their players leaving to join western football club soon after forming in 1880 some members of the club founded the junior offshoot of the side which joined the scottish junior football association and they played in the inaugural scottish junior cup that season the last game recorded for Blyswood was a 9-0 defeat to Hawkthorne club in 1882 with the side seeming to disband shortly afterwards and the next fixture against glenburn never taking place and that's our list. If you are new around here, please make sure to hit like and subscribe and make sure you tune in regularly for more up-to-date content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.